Zoom. Um, thanks, Shana. Um, just so we can, uh, I can. Watch this. Ooh, hang on. One minute. There we go. There we go. Uh, once I've worked out how to use Zoom myself, I will show you how to use Zoom uh, in case you're a bit new to it. So I am sharing my screen now, so you should be able to see the um, presentation. Uh, I think wave at me panickedly if you can't see anything, um, and I'll try and fix that, but it looks like everyone's looking comfortable. Um, so yeah, just for those of you who are new to Zoom, um, these are the general kind of buttons you have available. Uh, if you wiggle your mouse around, they might appear from the bottom because uh, sometimes they disappear. So everyone's on mute now just because there's so many of us today um, just to avoid background noises and things. If you do want to turn your microphone on at any point, you just press down on this little microphone button to unmute yourself. Um, if you need to turn your video off at any point, for whatever reason, uh, you can also do that. Um, there is a chat function if you want to ask any questions. Um, I think because there's so many of us and there's quite a bit to get through, I might, if you have any questions throughout, maybe just jot them down or keep a memory of them. Um, and then I'll ask at the end, I think that might be easier than um, pausing throughout and might cover some of your questions as we go through. Um, also participant view. So um, you should be able to see my screen the biggest. Um, but just in case you can adjust the view, so speak of you um, should show me rather than everybody else on little tiles, but shouldn't be so much of a problem as I'm sharing my screen. Um, and we are recording this session. So again, it should just record my screen and me. Um, if you really are worried about being on a recording, you can turn your camera off, but generally it should just record me and the screen. Great, so does anyone have any urgent Zoom questions before we kick off? Everyone's looking happy. Great, I think we'll get started and there'll probably be a few more people joining as we go along. Um, so thank you for coming along today to uh, talk about aids and adaptations. Um, yeah, I'll just let me change my screen. So um, I've seen a lot of you and a lot of you are familiar to me, uh, but just for anyone that hasn't been along to one of our uh, workshops or events or doesn't know who I am, uh, I'm Anastasia, I work at Attacks UK on the In Control Community uh, Programme. Um, and here next to me is my lovely colleague Shana, um, who also works on the In Control project. Uh, so the In Control project was set up in 2020 uh, with La National Lottery Community Funding. Um, and what we aim to do within Attacks UK is anything to do with community, um, volunteering, and providing events and services that are relevant to what people with Ataxia need. Uh, so that's a general overview. Um, we're always looking for more ideas and things you want from us, things you'd like more information about. So always get in touch if you've got ideas or questions. So today we're gonna go, uh, quite a lot of information. So I'll try not to overwhelm you and skim through some of it. Um, I will be sending the presentation out afterwards. So don't worry too much about having to jot things down. Um, a lot of the pictures and there's a lot of links in there. So you'll be able to click on those afterwards to take away in your own time. Uh, so I'm quickly going to be going through why the benefit of using aids and adaptations. Uh, I'm going to whiz through some different types. Um, again, I've kind of tried to pick, there's so much out there, which I'm been looking for this uh, presentation. I've been amazed by how much is available. So I've just kind of picked a selection of ones that I think people may not know as much about, um, or ones that will help with kind of common symptoms of ataxia, so the balance, um, communication, those kinds of things. Uh, of course, there's so much more out there. So please do use this as a starting point to kind of go off and look for more and find things that suit you specifically. Uh, I'm also going to be talking quickly about some funding and grants. Uh, so if you're making adaptations around the home, or if you're purchasing additional equipment, um, again, that can be one of the most difficult parts of it is the cost, particularly when we start to look at things like wheelchairs and uh, kind of car adaptations. Uh, so talking you through some of the help you can get there. And then I'll be finishing off with where to find some more information. Um, I will also say now that I live next to a very busy road, as you may hear. Um, so please uh, bear with me if there's ambulances and things I might have to pause for a second. Okay. Ooh, I can see something in the chat. Shana, if there's anything I need to know, please do shout out. 
Right. Ah, that was you. Great. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna move your little screens up. Um, so yeah, again, just to say, everyone is different and attacks your affection in different ways. So um, please don't be offended if I'm kind of talking about things that you think are completely irrelevant to me and that's not something you need. Um, and likewise, uh, you know, sometimes it can be good to keep hold of this presentation for the future in case needs change and you need to refer back. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be looking at stuff that covers uh, common symptoms, so balance, coordination, uh, reduction of fine motor skills, um, and speech issues. But please, like I said, do go and have a look. It is, there's so much out there. Um, it's quite overwhelming when you start to look. Uh, um, and also one of the things we commonly hear from people, um, which is just also something to think about when we're talking about aids and adaptations, uh, this comes up quite often in terms of kind of mobility, is the use it or lose it. So, you know, people think I've got to struggle on with, you know, how I've always done things, um, because if I don't, then I'm going to lose that ability. Um, and while that's kind of really understandable and, uh, you know, it's definitely something to talk about therapists, so your physiotherapist, speech therapist, occupational therapist. Um, I think it's also, you know, being open to different aids and adaptations. Um, I think it can feel like kind of, um, you know, kind of a failure or that you're having, you know, it's kind of can be uh, quite upsetting for some people. Um, but, you know, if you think that everyday things, it can really take a lot of the frustration out of everyday life and just make life easier and take, you know, make you feel so much more able um, with your ataxia. So I think coming at it from kind of an open mindset and giving things a try. And if they don't work, that's fine. And um, it's really about working out what works for you. Um, so quickly going to talk through kind of where to start. So um, in terms of kind of funding and where to start looking for kind of particularly bigger adaptations, so things you might need to do around the home or mobility wise. Um, so local authorities are responsible for home adaptations and each local authority should have a team um, for home adaptations and assessments. Um, as we know, services in different areas unfortunately vary quite a bit. Um, so this can vary on kind of how they work, how long and what kind of funding is available. Um, there also should be access to an occupational therapist, um, which I'll talk a bit more about in a second. Um, but again, please try and ask for that service. Um, and if not, it may be something you can pursue privately, but hopefully there should be some sort of service in place uh, locally. Um, in some areas, housing associations are responsible for aids and adaptations. Um, if you go onto the gov website, I've put a link there. Um, that should be able to, if you put in your postcode, it should tell you who deals with that stuff in the local area and give you some uh, direction of where to start. Um, and then the NHS, uh, they provide adaptations and equipment uh, usually when there's an urgent need, uh, you may be coming out of hospital or if there's something they can do around your home that prevents you having to go into hospital. So just so you're aware, kind of the NHS is more that urgent side of things. Um, you are, have a right under the Duty of Care Act um, that, that to have an assessment uh, for support that you might need. Um, so definitely once you look at your local authority, you can ask for an occupational therapist and also ask for an assessment. So someone should be able to come out to your home and kind of talk through with you what adaptations you'll need. Um, so again, I've put the Gov links there. Um, also, uh, again, something I find quite often in the, my role here is uh, information can be a bit tricky to find. Uh, so there's some helpful information there if you're looking on kind of your local council website and struggling to find things. Um, those are the kind of phrases to look for. Um, also, again, if it's not there, just call cool because sometimes things are hidden or uh, they don't necessarily always advertise their services widely, but if you ask, things are there. Um, again, occupational therapists you should um, be able to get an appointment with. Again, waiting lists can differ, times can differ. If you do want to look privately, there's um, some registry lists there of people you can go to. Um, I think. Um, so I've talked a bit about occupational therapists. Some of you uh, may not be as familiar with that. Um, so again, that's something that the GP or the neurologist um, should be referring you to, but you can also ask them as well. Um, and this is someone that helps you with 
anything to do with living your daily life easier. So again, it's they're great for kind of talking about mobility, so wheelchairs, um, you know, how to continue driving, how to continue working, anything that um, is going to maintain your quality of life. Um, they have lots of kind of knowledge of different aids and adaptations, where to go. Again, should hopefully be able to point you in the direction of funding. Um, and there is a link I've popped down here, which we use on our All About a Taxi sessions. Um, so in your spare time, if you want to know more about what occupational therapists do, um, we've got Mary Wake, who's a specialist, um, talking a bit about her role and things she can help with. Um, great, so then on to funding and grants. Um, so in terms of government and council schemes, um, so there's the Equipment for Your Home uh, small grants, which is usually anything under £1,000. Um, again, these ones highlighted in blue should all be linked. So when I send you the presentation, do go and have a look at those. Um, so that helps with you find any specialist equipment. Uh, the Disabled Facilities Grants, uh, those are a government grant for that are covering kind of um, adaptations over a thousand pounds. Um, again, there's an application process. Um, and also to be aware with a lot of those government ones, uh, just meant to mention. Uh, so if you're having kind of work done to the house or building work, do get your applications in before because they usually need for you to access that money. They need proof that um, you have all the right permissions and they agree with you beforehand. So don't think, oh, start it and then try and claim back afterwards because um, they won't give you the money. Um, also to be aware, so any kind of adaptive equipment, um, you should get VAT relief on. Again, if you're buying kind of from specialist equipment shops, this should be included, but do um, ask them about it if it's not obvious. Um, again, if you're importing anything from overseas, um, say, for example, you find a company in America that has something really specialist that you want, again, they might have VAT inbuilt, but if you're kind of doing that process yourself, you can also apply for that. Um, there is also council tax disabled band reduction. So i use the example they gave on the website here. So uh, say, for example, if you extend your house to have an extra downstairs bedroom, um, your council tax would then go up. Um, but if that is for a uh, reason of disability, then you should be able to get uh, the council tax reduced. Um, so do have a look at that. Uh, they also provide access to work grants. Uh, so this is a grant for any equipment or uh, adaptations you may need in the workplace. Um, so again, this can be things like, it also um, counts if you're looking to get into work. So say for example, you're going for an interview and maybe your speech is impaired. Uh, you might need help with a note take or a translator. Um, or how does some cost kind of things, even if you're not in a job at the moment. Um, so do have a look at that, but it also covers things like helping you get to work, transport, and um, different equipment. Uh, also, as an aside to that, uh, employers have a responsibility under the law to provide a suitable workspace and reasonable adjustments to all employees. So um, make sure that you know your company, things like especially as keyboards, mouses, chairs, all of that, they should be supporting with you anyway without you having to kind of go and apply for the larger grant. Um, and again, if your employer isn't doing that, um, then please, you can get in touch with the helpline um, or advocacy services that we can point you to that will support you in that um, with your employer. Right. Um, there's also, uh, an aside, aside to the kind of government funding, um, and I should say actually that alongside those different councils may have different parts or different local charities that they link up with. So again, always get in touch and see what, what is available. Um, uh, in addition to that, uh, there are some charitable trusts and foundations, um, which you can also apply to. Um, so the list I've got here are ones specifically that Attacks UK has had quite a lot of uh, success or engagement with in the past. Um, so there's things like Barchester's Charitable Foundation, uh, the Headley Trust, again, various kind of different criteria and um, amounts that they'll pay for. Um, but you can go back through and have a look afterwards. Um, with these ones, some of them do require uh, you to be, have a referral from another organisation or uh, social services or something like that. So again, these ones definitely get in touch with us uh, as we usually help people with their applications and it increases the chances that uh, you'll get them as we're used to filling out the um, applications. Uh, another one just to mention is the Mark Dower Trust. So this one's specifically for anyone 16 to 30 years old. Um, it's not specifically for adaptations for the home and mobility, but if there's any specialist equipment uh, or things that 
young people need to help them maintain an independent life, uh, pursue hobbies, interests or work. Um, then that is a really great uh, small grant that is specifically for people with ataxia um, under 30. Uh, that one is coming up quite soon, the applications. It happens on an annual basis, so the applications close on the 31st of January. Um, so if you want to uh, apply for that or know anyone that it might be relevant to, then please get in touch and again we'll uh, help with applications. Um, and there's a link there at the bottom which explains a bit more about that. Mm -hmm. Um, also, more generally, um, so these websites have some different fact sheets about uh, different funding. Uh, Time to Us is a really great website um, that kind of covers a lot more than just uh, adaptations and aids. Um, it has kind of an eligibility calculator and uh, will link you up with different uh, pots of money um, it might be eligible for. Right, so then I'm just going to uh, get on to some of the different little uh, gadgets, adaptations that can uh, help around the home and in different areas. Um, again, some of these might be useful, some might not. Um, so these are just some really general ones. Uh, again, around the home, we all know about things from like grab rails, um, you know, kind of steps. Uh, so I try not to cover as much of kind of the obvious ones. Um, but again, if you're interested, please ask me and I can try and dig some out for you. Um, again, just some other things to think about. Um, I have a lot of these on my shopping list now. Uh, these ones are great. Um, again, if you're struggling with grabbing, uh, it's like a little attach, uh, plastic attachment you put around a plug and it helps you to pull it out because I find that can get quite sticky. Um, key safes, uh, again, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with these, but again, they can quite, be quite helpful, especially if you're worried about kind of um, times when you may be at home, if you have a call or something. Um, these are safes that you could put outside your house and give a loved one uh, a key so that, you know, should anything happen, it's quite easy for them to get in or emergency services. So it has a little lock code on there. Um, these kind of grabby tools, as you can see, they're quite popular, um, especially for kind of, you know, help it, if you don't want to kind of get up and down as much from your chair, uh, reaching things around you. Um, there's these little key things, which, uh, again, key can be quite fiddly to turn, so it extends the turn in space. Um, there's some basic ones. Um, I haven't done too much on here about uh, walk-in aids, wheelchairs, rollators, uh, just because I think they're so kind of specific and there's a lot of uh, different types. And again, it's really a good one to talk through, I think, with uh, occupational therapists as there's so much kind of different, different suitability for everyone. Um, but I've included some links here, so do have a look and a dig around. Um, I've also got at the end of this slide, uh, one of the questions that a lot of people ask me is, oh, you know, I've seen this role later, I've seen this walker, uh, how do I know if it's any good? Um, so a lot of companies will do kind of uh, trials, so you can test it or go and have kind of a, a test walk um, or go with it. Um, also, there's forums, so uh, there's a link at the end to things like Health Unlocked or using Facebook groups. Um, Scope, which is a disability charity, also has forums. So they can be really great for you can post messages in there and see, you know, oh, I've looked at buying this thing. Uh, does it work? What is it good for? And that's a really good way of kind of hearing from people who have tried it or bought it um, and seeing what they think of it. Um, um, one I have included, as I know it's quite popular with um, people with ataxia, is the Stair Steady. Um, so this is a fixed handrail that goes up the stairs um, and it has this moving section. Um, so it kind of moves and helps steady as you walk along, um, but then if you put weight on it, it will lock. Um, so that's a really useful one. Again, there's a link to that one. I'm going to quickly talk about my mobility scheme, um, which is great for um, anything to do with uh, driving or, again, this covers things like wheelchairs and scooters. Um, so Motability Scheme enables anyone with a higher rate mobility allowance to exchange all or part of their mobility allowance to lease a car, scooter, powered wheelchair or wheelchair accessible vehicle. Um, please do have a look at their website. Uh, it's got so much information and also they've got just kind of blog posts on there which uh, about other types of adaptation that are not related to driving that are really helpful. Um, they have a really good questionnaire to help you find the type of vehicle that might be right for you. Um, and it's also kind of explains a lot about hand, uh, different add-ons you can get. So for example, if you're driving, um, you know, you can get 
things to you can control the uh, pedals from the steering wheel or um, extra buttons and things. So it could be something kind of more straightforward than having to you know have a whole specially adapted car. Um, again, with your PIP allowance means that you can either if the car is the same price, you can either um, switch part of your PIP allowance for that and there's no extra to pay or then if you want extra add-ons you can kind of pay in advance on top of that um, and again that should be if you go on the website there's an eligibility checker and they have links with dealerships all over the UK so that can help you find somewhere and a lot of the dealerships will have uh, a motability specialist who can talk you through all the different adaptations and kind of an expert in it um, again if you want any help with kind of looking at motability then um, do get in touch with the helpline which I'll give you the details for later. So um, then again just to showcase some of the types of things you might be able to get bathrooms but again there's so much um, so things like bath boards which you can see here are quite helpful for kind of sitting on and then swiveling and laying yourself down, uh, shower stools, um, again these little kind of steps um i came across a blog post that was saying you know sometimes uh they don't like how these things look so you know there are alternatives like these wooden ones that um can seem a bit less medical um and again you know keeping your eyes out for sometimes things aren't specialist equipment but as long as they've got kind of the right grip um and they're steady then you know you can find other alternatives um also things if you struggle kind of with uh turning or uh grip then you can get things like these tap turners that kind of fit on over the tap and then make it easier to twist them. Um, and again, things like grab rails, um, you can get kind of suction ones, although uh, sometimes they're not as sturdy. So usually the drilled in ones are better. But um, again, at the end, I'll put links. So most of the stuff I'm going to show you on these pages I've got from two websites or two shops, uh, which are Disability Horizons and Living Made Easy. Uh, Living Made Easy is really great as it's kind of like a comparison. So it has different categories, but then it will show you a range of different places to buy them and you know different price ranges and things. Um, and again, when I send a presentation, a lot of these should have, if you click on the pictures, there should be a link to where I found it from. Um, kitchen, so again, there's a lot of kind of adaptive kitchen tools you can get. Um, things like perch stalls, people find uh, helpful with and if you're standing up for a long time cooking, you can kind of lean on. Um, as you can see here, there's some knives, if you, uh, scissors, uh, if you struggle with scissors, so ones that you can either push down or again, they kind of self open so you don't have to worry about having so much kind of a compressing movement, it will pop back open for you. Um, and again, not having to worry about getting your fingers into the scissors. Uh, there's also things like this uh, cutting guide, so it enables you to kind of cut things in the uh, guide for you. Um, also got some other things here. So again, like I was saying, don't always have to look for kind of specialist uh, disability target equipment. So um, for example, these chopping boards, my friend showed me she's got one the other day and I thought it was genius. Um, it's a company called Joseph and Joseph. So you chop and then it allows you to kind of pull it in and tip it. Um, you know, again, if your balance isn't great, it'll stop things from tipping over the edge as you're transferring. Um, again, if you kind of struggle with kettles and you know, balancing hot water. Uh, you can either get kind of tipping devices like this, which will fit in uh, a normal kettle, or you can buy these hot water dispensers. So, you know, um, you don't have to balance it. You just put your cup under there. Um, they're really helpful. Uh, you can also get kind of little things like these grips that fit onto bottle tops and help you to twist. Um, again, you know, that's quite portable, something that you can carry with you when you're out and about. Um, this one, I'm looking at Shana because I know her face is going to light up. This is her favourite and it's a lot of people's uh, favourite is this spill not cup holder. Um, so this works. I find it amazing. If you go onto YouTube, uh, do have a look. It works on a centrifuge. So um, if you, it has kind of a rubber grip uh, there, you've kind of I've pulled onto the... I've got one here. Yes, we've got one live. There you go, Ed. See? I mean, you can tell us, Ed, how do you find it? Everyone seems to have oh, their life changed great. by it. <laughs> it's so useful. It's I've only got a small one-bedroom flat, so my kitchen's right there. But you can just walk around the flat. I use it all the time. Yeah. I don't even realise I'm using it now. <laughs> yeah, um, and again, you can put, you know, not just for cups, anything, I guess, that you want to kind of carry that might spill or drop. Um, so yeah, it should mean that it swings, but because of the balance, it won't uh, spill your drink. 
Uh, and there is also this bigger version, which is a bigger tray version, um, there, which again is really handy. Um, you can get handles like these ones that can go on an extra cup, just giving you two handles, sometimes a bit more stability. Um, this one, which I'm really excited about and I'm definitely getting one is, um, it fits onto your armchair and then uh, you can put a, it's like a cup holder. Um, so again, lots of, and you know, that's just a really small selection of things. Um, so do go and have a look on those websites and most of kind of the, dis the yeah, disability or uh, accessibility shops um, will have different categories. So kitchen, bathroom, so, you know, just scroll through because there's so many things that, you know, as I've been researching this, I had no idea existed um, and can kind of solve problems sometimes that you didn't even think you might have. Um, also, uh, another one that I know speech therapists recommend uh, quite a bit. So some people, uh, speech is affected, but also you're swallowing um, sometimes by ataxia. Um, so these one-way drinking straws can be quite good. So it means that if you um, suck, it kind of will hold the liquid. Um, some people kind of struggle with kind of the suction side of things. Um, so they are always highly recommended. Um, and also these kind of uh, cutlery. So if you kind of have more of a tremor or uh, kind of, uh, yeah, food kind of tends to fall off the side. This, uh, I don't really like the name. It makes me think of something, something odd, uh, but Guyano cutlery, um, it kind of adjusts to your natural tremors. So it should keep the cutlery steady. Um, so again, there's a link for that one. Um, included pets, because again, I was thinking of uh, Ziggy, my cat here. Um, but again, uh, so things like you can get hand-free leads. So if you're worried about being able to kind of grip onto a lead and that um, might get loose, you can get ones that, you know, adjust around your wrist or something or onto a wheelchair uh, or a walker. Um, also, if you're kind of struggling with kind of grooming and holding brushes, uh, I've got one of these gloves. They're great. So you just put it on and um, you can kind of stroke through and it kind of grooms animals as you go. Um, and then again, also these kind of ramp things can really help if you uh, maybe you have kind of a smaller pet that struggles to get up onto higher places, but you may not be able to always kind of stoop and pick them up. Um, and the ramps can be really handy. Um, again, another one is dressing. Again, I got very excited about a lot of these. Um, so things like long nail uh, scissors. Um, again, you can get other ones that are kind of more grippy for again, like personal hygiene. Um, there's things like, again, if you struggle to kind of bend down or lose your balance or grip, um, this one for kind of taking off shoes is quite handy. Uh, there's things like snow grips. Um, again, if it's a bit icy or cold and you're already worried about falls, then uh, these are things that you can kind of attach over your shoes. And again, there's lots of different variations um, in terms of how they look or even kind of you can get grippy tape. Um, so that just helps if you're somewhere that's a bit more slippy. Um, again, for around the house, uh, you can get specialist grip socks um or grip slippers which you know um lessen the risk of falling over um things like these little ring pulls that fit over zippers so again if they can be a bit fiddly it just gives you a bigger surface to kind of hold on to um this one which i think every woman needs which is um well every woman unless you've been going to the gym a lot um every, hold it, it kind of holds your hair dryer in place so I mean, it takes me about three hours to dry this. I don't know if my arm is kind of about to drop off. Um, so that's a really, really handy one. Um, also, again, um, one that might be helpful uh, for a few people. Um, this uh, thing you can see in the middle here kind of holds, if you're putting on a bra, holds your bra in place while you kind of bring the other end around. Um, again, can be fiddly at the best of times, so that's a really useful one. Uh, you can get things like button hooks and zippers, which you can just see at the end here again kind of fit over um, and help you to do buttons more easily um, and also another one again this is something that I've had come up in support groups um, you know kind of this continence issues uh, now uh, again not just kind of for continence but also in terms of kind of period um, products uh, there's a lot of companies making really good underwear um, that has kind of a insert in it which has a special substance that absorbs a lot of liquid um, so again, that can just give you a bit of extra security, but you know, they also do them in really nice designs now and um, they're a lot more comfortable. And again, that's uh, available for men and women. Um, I've put one company there, but there's again, a lot of those who do have a look. 
Um, then in terms of kind of digital and communication things, so um, a lot of things that come up is that people struggle with typing, um, you know, might be hitting the wrong keys or again, just struggle to get that precision. Um, so there's lots of different things you can get. So for example, here for home phones, you can get large button phones, uh, particularly like this one, because you can put, um, you know, there's the same three people you call. Uh, you can have buttons set so it's just a press of a button. You don't have to worry about doing the number. Um, in terms of using, uh, sorry, I also should say um, there's a lot of companies, uh, either kind of regular phone shops or specialist companies that will do mobiles that are um, bigger buttons, uh, you know, different adjustments, making them easier to use. Uh, for computers, you can get different types of mouses. So um, some of them have a roller ball. Um, so it has kind of one central ball, which people find easier to press. Um, also joysticks, again, depending on what you find easy, um, they can be easier. Um, key guards, which I think I've got uh, a picture of here. So again, that problem of if you're struggling to hit, you know, just one key at a time, this means that you kind of have to press down through the gaps, but it avoids that problem of hitting other keys by accident. Um, you can also get things like these ergonomic keyboards, uh, which is a bit um, strange to start with, but actually in terms of how your hands rest, make a lot more sense, um, again, for anybody. Um, it's a more natural angle to how your hands actually sit and that can relieve, you know, definitely some of the tension in the hands. Um, I woke up this morning and my hands were so achy from being on kind of keyboards and probably my knitting hobby as well. But um, again, it just releases the tension. And then you can also get things like this one, which is called the penguin mouse. And you can see for obvious reasons, um, which is vertical and has, again, different uh, buttons that might be easier to press. Um, also something that people find really helpful is things like the Amazon Echo and Google Docs. So again, being able to, you know, without having to type in what the weather is or, you know, going to play music or find different information, it's all voice activated. So you can just shout over, hey Alexa. Um, don't do it if your wife's called Alexa, that could get very confusing and she might not like you um, if you keep shouting at her. But again, um, different kind of uh, dictation um, technology can just help around the house. There are also, this is way too techy for me, but I'm sure it's not as difficult um, as I think it is because my mum and her partner have managed to do it. So, and you know, they struggle at the best of times, but a lot of them you can um, get things linked up to your light switches, or I think they call them like a smart home hub. Um, again, if you go into kind of general electronic stores, they can set that up for you and explain how it works. Um, but yeah, you know, if you don't want to have to keep getting up to adjust the heating or things, there's all those kind of adaptive around the home smart technology. Um, I've included a website there, inclusive.co.uk, has a lot of uh, technological things um, related to accessibility. So have a look at that one. Uh, also, Communication Matters is an organisation that has lots of advice and information about accessible communication. Again, if you're like wanting to look at comparisons between different types of things, uh, that's a really great place to look. Um, Sesame Enable app. Uh, so I've been trying a few out of these out this week. So this is one. Sesame is for your mobile, but also you can get a PC and a hands-free keyboard. Um, so it means that you can control the cursor with your head movements. So as you kind of turn your head, your cursor will move. Um, I was quite amazed that that already exists. That seems really futuristic to me, but, um, or I know there's kind of versions you can get um, that are very expensive, you know, and require special cameras and uh, tablets. Um, but this one just should run off your normal phone uh, camera. Um, so do have a look at that. Um, there are also things on phones now, again, like uh, the Hey Siri or Bigsby, I think is the uh, Android one, which I always feel a bit silly saying. But um, again, that's something that, you know, if you just speak into it and say, what's the weather, it'll read it out for you. Or again, just helps you, you know, reduces the amount of tapping about you might have to do. Um, I've also included a list there to different keyboard apps. Uh, so again, some of them can uh, adjust where the keyboard sit, how easy it is for you to use, the size of the keys. Um, and there's also, again, a lot of these, I think started out as apps, but are now in built on a lot of smartphones. Um, so I have it on my phone where you can kind of swipe over. So instead of having to tap, um, again, you inevitably hit other keys, but it kind of predicts what you're trying to say. And um, they're really effective actually. I find them a lot easier than tapping. Um, 
There's also, again, some other websites there to do have a look. Uh, camera mouse is similar to the Sesame one that I was talking about. That one's uh, more specifically for computers. Um, again, I gave it a go today and it's really handy. So you move your head to kind of point. Um, and then if you rest your eye, if you kind of keep still on something for you know two or three seconds, then it will click. Um, so that's really helpful. Um, and then, like I was saying, a lot of it is kind of inbuilt. So again, there might be simple things you can do on your own kind of PC or laptop that can make it a bit easier to use. Um, so if you go into the settings, uh, there's, um, I'm not going to read through all that because it's a bit lengthy, but um, you can adjust the repeat and delay. So again, if you're, you know, sometimes people find it difficult to move between one key and another, and obviously you hold down you know, the button for too long, it will just keep, you know, do a line of A's or B's. Um, so that one, you can adjust the time that it will only start pressing multiple times if you hold it down after, say, five seconds. Um, so it just gives you a bit more time to move on to the next one. Um, toggle keys uh, is also useful. So that will play a sound. You can kind of set different sounds you want. Um, say if you accidentally hit the caps lock, it will press a noise just so you know, because sometimes people type here by mistake. And then when they look up, everything's in caps and they didn't want it to be. Um, there's also, again, for phones, um, Apple, there's a guide there. So they talk through all the different features they've got that should be inbuilt or extra apps you can get for free, um, which help with making your phone more accessible. And also the same for Android there. So do have a look at those. Um, also things like your mouse settings. Um, again, I find that I do quite jerky movements. So, you know, things like slowing down your cursor speed. Um, just might help with kind of accuracy where you're pointing. Um, looking at voice and dictation ones. So again, you know, in terms of your needing to type uh, a letter or do something a bit more lengthy, you know, that can take a really long time if you're struggling with typing. Um, so there's different services you can use. So uh, there's the free Dragon Anywhere app, uh, which is again, dictation. So you can open up a Word document, you enable it, and then you talk and, um, it can write it up for you. Uh, there's also Otter AI, um, which again isn't kind of a specialist one. It's often used by uh, journalists and people doing interviews and that kind of thing. Um, again, you know, a few years back, these services were really not that great. You'd get kind of a lot of wrong words coming through, but they've really improved now. Um, and again, you know, it's I've used the Otter AI one before. Uh, it doesn't always pick up on my weird half brummy mixed accent. Um, so again, you know, can type out the majority and then if there's certain words it's not picked up on or it's written correctly, you just can go back then and just have to type, retype that one word um, or correct it or it'll give you a list of similar words it could be. Um, there's Microsoft Narrator, uh, which is again inbuilt and it can read out certain text for you or different things around your screen. Um, again, you know, sometimes eye focus can also be a problem and stare at things for a very long time. So. Again, having something read out to you might be a bit easier. Uh, and again, there's some more app suggestions there. Um, I've just included a few links. If you click on these, there's also you know, lots of specialist things. So if you really enjoy gardening or sewing or crafts, um, do have a look because there's a selection of different tools there. Um, and again, if you have a particular hobby, I came across yesterday, um, the uh, say people who are still interested in doing photography but might find that tricky. If you kind of put in um, photographers, accessibility, disability into Google, a lot of them, there are kind of specialist uh, groups or societies. And again, they've got loads of advice on, um, so, you know, the photography, it was things like holding the camera steady. So they have loads of really good suggestions for different tripods, uh, different cameras that might have bigger buttons. Um, so do kind of have a little dig around, even if you think it's really niche. Again, there's usually uh, somebody else who's um, having the same kind of challenges and find a way to kind of overcome them. Um, also, if you're really into reading, again, um, holding a book up for quite a long time can be tricky or visually it can be tricky. Um, there's lots of, usually local libraries will have um, free ebook um, apps. Um, so again, as long as you've got a library card, you will have access to thousands and thousands of books. Um, and also Audible is another great, um, that's you, you can get a free version, you can get paid for, that's again another app that um, has lots of audio books and things. Um, 
Again, just to show you kind of some specific more uh, hobby and craft things. Um, so there's things like these wheelchair trays, um, which I was reading a lot of people use for craft. It kind of has a very uh, steady surface and allows you to do kind of small things uh, closer to you. This one um, is genius, I think. It's a kind of a thimble that you put on and it has a blade in the front, so you can just use it to cut. Um, tabletop scissors again. I really like this card, um, one for holding your cards. Again, you know, something you might think is very kind of niche and not as many people have used it, but um, it does exist. Um, and this active hand, which I'll show you another version of in a second. So this is, um, again, if you struggle to kind of maintain grip, uh, it's a glove and you attach it and then it's got um, these kind of levers that, and Velcro bits that you can adjust so you can kind of lock your hand in place. Um, so that could be around a pencil, but um, I'll show you there's one kind of more that you can use for exercise. Um, again, I think that one's specifically for kind of smaller items. Uh, yeah, so that's the kind of bigger one. Again, it's very popular for kind of sports equipment, um, just helps you to really maintain the grip and also is quite supportive on the wrists and um, joints. Uh, there's things here like little hand exercises so that can really help you with uh, kind of keeping those muscles strong. Um, this is cap tongue grip tape. Again, would have a million uses. Um, it's got really kind of strong uh, grip. So again, helps you to maintain uh, that. Things like pedal exercises, again, a really common thing is what kind of exercise can you do? Um, so that's a great one as it's seated, um, but also uh, do have a look. Um, we also do things like chair Pilates and chair yoga, um, and also physiotherapists should be able to um, advise on different exercises. Um, another one that some of you may or may know, not know about um, are radar keys. Um, so a lot of uh, disabled toilets um, will be locked and then again finding someone who actually has the key or to open them can be a nightmare but a lot of them should be fitted um, with the same key. Um, so the national key scheme you can buy these radar keys, um, some of them you can get for free from local authorities or you can buy them from disability rights for five pounds um, but again it should mean that you can access a lot of those toilets. There's also an app um, that goes along with it that will tell you where your nearest public toilet is that has these keys. And the stars here, there is also a handbook that you can get with all, oh, really? all located uh, oh, uh, great. visible toilets. Thank and you, Anne. Yeah. That gets you a paper copy. Um, and you. that is also got from Disability Rights. Oh, great. I'll add that in because, yeah, I always just forget that apps are not always the easiest and um yeah paper copies can be really handy too so thank you Anne great um so yeah that's kind of a snapshot of the stuff I found um please do go and have a look yourself so I've included a list here of different shops and providers um so like I said living made it easy is a really good kind of comparison one and again you know sometimes if you uh you might see something and it could be really expensive or again a lot of times they'll be sold out just go onto Google and you know, search the product name and you might be able to get it somewhere else or, you know, it's good to do a price comparison. Um, there's also things like mobility equipment hire. So again, you might have a wheelchair at home, but save your plan in a little uh, staycation somewhere. Um, but you think, oh, it's going to be a nightmare to carry stuff. Um, this kind of links you up with companies where you might be able to hire stuff um, while you're away. Uh, what else have we got? There's things like WizKids, which is um, especially for children and uh, specifically adapted for children um, and also kind of usually has a more fun element. Um, Remap is another charity that they have uh, kind of volunteers who are product designers. So if you've got kind of a really niche um, need or something very specific, they can design something especially for you. And then again, information and advice. So there's different things on there. A lot of these websites will have uh, user forums. So again, you can pop your question in there um, or even search and you might see previous answers to questions that people have asked. Um, Health and Locked, like I said, is a really good one. Um, if you're not on there, that's good for a million things. Um, also look at reviews and a lot of the shops will have uh, you know, uh, like a live chat or ask the expert function or a number that you can call and they have occupational therapists who work specifically for them that can kind of give you advice uh, if you're really struggling. Again, sometimes there can just be almost too much choice that sometimes talking it through with someone to really work through what, what would suit you best can be helpful. 
Um, also, for those of you who haven't heard of it before, uh, NADEX is a annual exhibition that takes place at the NEC in Birmingham. I think it's in July this year. Um, and that has lots of different companies. So showcasing different aids, adaptations. Uh, there's also kind of speakers there. Um, but again, that can be really great because you can go and try out a lot of different stuff in one go. A lot of them will do demos. Um, and there's kind of, you know, test drive areas and things. So it's really good to see what's out there all in one go, especially if, you know, um, you're not as keen with kind of trawling through the internet for hours. Um, again, just some other websites you might want to look at in your own time. So again, things to help uh, with parenting um, and also put things there that might help with uh, relationships and sex. So I think that's uh, most of it. I hope I haven't um, bored you to death and I hope there's some stuff there that you find useful. Um, please do go away and kind of have a look at more stuff and uh, see what you find. Um, but also, you know, if you want more help or guidance or you need pointing in the right direction, um, we do have our helpline, uh, which is open Monday to Thursdays. Uh, there's a phone number there or an email. And again, we can kind of put you in touch. And again, you know, if you're, we also kind of do bits of advocacy. Um, so if you're struggling, you know, with your local council, if, you know, you're struggling to access funding that you think you're entitled to or anything like that, we can always uh, try and help with that on your behalf. Um, I'm quickly, before I go to questions, uh, just going to whiz through, uh, again, if you're new to us, some of the other things that we have uh, running that you might find helpful. Uh, so coming up in February, we've got uh, all about ataxia sessions. Uh, these are for people either with a new ataxia diagnosis or if you just feel like you don't kind of have much comprehensive information about ataxia. Uh, it runs across two mornings on Zoom. It's led by our wonderful volunteers um, and they talk through basic information about ataxia and then there's lots of kind of breakout rooms where you can talk with others and with the volunteers, um, ask lots of questions. Uh, we talk about things like occupational therapy, speech therapy, physiotherapy. Um, and there's also videos from nurses and specialists from the uh, ataxi clinics, um, so the neurologists. Um, so please do have a look at that if you think it might be useful. Um, we also run a befriending session, um, friend service. So if you would like to have a phone call or Zoom or text um, interaction with another person um, who has a tax or experience of ataxia, um, please get in touch. Uh, we also have branches and support groups, which again, great way to meet a lot of other people and hear what other you know, people's tips and tricks. Um, a lot of them are online at the moment um, and some of them will plan to go on, stay online even when you know, pandemic things get back to normal. Um, so for any that are online, even if they're not in your local area, you're very welcome to go along anyway. Um, and as I mentioned, the helpline, there's just a selection of other things that they can, they can assist with. Great, so I'm gonna stop now and ask for, stop sharing my screen and I'll take any questions. There we go. Right. Um, shall we 